with house prices falling in the past 12 months, is it worth waiting to buy or is it better just to bite the bullet and not worry about forecasts? Despite modest house price falls, house price to income ratios are still close to record levels and combined with high interest rates and a weak economy, housing affordability will remain stretched throughout 2024. The good news is that even a conservative forecast by Bloomberg suggests that house price to income ratios will fall over the next two years, making it more affordable for quite a few people. In this video, we'll look at expert forecasts for house prices, but also all the other issues that are important when considering buying a house. Now, the past interest rate increases have seen mortgage payments as a share of disposable income rise to levels not seen since previous crashes but it is worth noting not quite as bad. Higher interest rates have definitely had a significant effect on the market, leading to a fall in new mortgage lending and lower transactions. However, despite these interest rate rises, prices have fallen by not quite as much as some people predicted. There are four reasons for this. Firstly, fixed rate mortgages became a lot more popular in the past 10 years, and so many households have been insulated from the interest rate increases. But this year, at least one and a half million households will be mortgaged to significantly higher rates, paying up to £500 a month extra, if not more. Already, mortgage losses reported by banks have been rising, and a combination of higher interest rates and a weakened economy is likely to worsen that. Now, in recent months, there's been some minor reduction in mortgage rates offered by uh, the big banks, which is good news for first-time buyers. But it is still important to compare it to two years ago, when mortgage rates were at least half the level they are now. This is why the likes of the OBR predict that house prices will fall into 2025 and only slowly recover. Now, not everyone agrees with this forecast, but it does suggest at the very least you don't need to rush into buying a house in the coming year. Compared to previous falls, in 2023, price falls have been quite muted. Either there's more to come or this time is different to the last crash. Another reason why house prices have held up better than expected is that because since the credit crunch, new rules on mortgage lending means that banks have to be stricter in what they can lend out, meaning that fewer homeowners have bad debt than uh, previous crashes. Thirdly, the UK still has a chronic shortage of housing combined with a rise in the population, so this uh, limits the amount of uh, housing on the market. Now, the good news on interest rates is that in the second half of 2023, inflation started to fall quicker than predicted. After being an outlier for many months, UK inflation started to catch up with a global trend towards lower inflation. The big drop in inflation in December actually caused markets to price in four interest rate cuts in the coming year. And after a worrying decline in transactions in 2023, there's been a little bit of increased interest in buying in December and uh, already this month. Now, it was such a big drop in inflation that Frank Knight actually revised their forecast for house prices from a 4% drop to a 3% rise in the coming year. However, if you're thinking of buying a house or even working as an economic forecaster, I would be wary about placing too much emphasis on month-to-month -month data. For example, last month, inflation rose higher than expected to 4%, and suddenly people go from optimism back to pessimism. So my advice is don't be blown off course by monthly news. People tend to overreact to monthly data. For example, last uh, March, I took out a variable mortgage and a few days later, there was a bad inflation data. And people said, oh, interest rates are going to go up to 7%. But fortunately, nine months on, the outlook looks different and interest rates very unlikely to rise and more likely to fall in the coming uh, year. And even if interest rates do fall uh, in the later part of the year, I don't think it will have much effect on house prices, at least in the short term, because interest rates have a long time delay before they affect spending and uh, house prices. And I should add that this forecast of high house prices is definitely not shared by uh, everyone. And we'll look at that later. The big problem is that potential buyers still face tremendous difficulty in buying a house. Households in their late uh, 20s face up to 19 years of saving for a deposit. The combination of higher interest rates plus the new requirements for stress testing mortgage lending means that buyers struggle to get a big enough mortgage to be able to buy unless they can get help from their uh, parents. 
real incomes have been battered by inflation, low productivity and a weak economy. And there are early signs of the UK entering into recession, with a drastic fall in retail sales at the end of last year. Now any rise in unemployment, or even fear of unemployment, will have a very negative effect on the housing market. Big housing crashes tend to occur in recessions, because it's not just interest rates, but also uh, real wages and the prospects for employment that are very important. Because if you're fearing unemployment, you don't want to take out a, a risky fixed uh, rate mortgage. One thing that might help the housing market, at least in the short term, is that with an upcoming election, the March budget is likely to see some kind of tax cuts which may help uh, consumer finances somewhat. And even promises of a sticking plaster policy of a 99% mortgage could influence a market. Now, I haven't got time to explain why this isn't really a good uh, solution to the UK's uh, housing crisis. But if and when it is implemented, it would see some increase in first-time buyer demand. But we'll have to see what actually happens. Now, as an economist, I'm interested in economic forecasts. But for a potential home buyer, it's not all about uh, economy and forecasts. If someone asks me a question, is it a good time to buy? The advice I would give is that if you're buying somewhere to live, it's always worth considering, especially if your alternative is paying very high market rents, which is probably a similar monthly burden to paying a mortgage, because at least with buying a house, you're starting to pay off your mortgage debt and when you reach retirement age, it makes a big difference about whether uh, you're paying market rents or whether you've paid off most of your property. Also, an important factor for any buyer is to know the state of the market. For example, Zoopla report that the agreed selling prices are at least a 5% discount off the asking prices, which suggests there's room to uh, bargain down any sellers. However, if we compare other data, there's an even bigger discrepancy. According to Rightmove, the average asking price in January of this year was £360,000. However, the average sold price, according to ONS, was £285,000, 2% uh, lower than the last year, and a big discrepancy between the Rightmove statistics. Now, they're not the same statistics. Housing data is uh, not an exact science. They measure different things. ONS has time delays, right move, don't measure every house. But it is important to bear in mind that there can be a big difference between the asking price and what it actually gets sold for. And also the new year has seen many old listings uh, deleted and relisted. A useful tool is a Chrome extension called Property Tracker, which you can look at previous listings, what the house was initially listed for, and it gives some pretty interesting data. Now, a crucial issue for many would-be first-time buyers is the issue of renting. 2023 was actually the first year since 2010 when renting became cheaper than buying. This is because despite rising rents, mortgage payments rose even faster. However, if we dig deeper, this effect is much more pronounced in the south. In the north, it's still cheaper to buy than to rent. And this is always an important consideration with the housing market. It's highly regional. House prices vary tremendously across the country. It's generally the South which has a greater shortage of housing, uh, more overvaluation, and more sensitive to the higher interest rates we're seeing. If you're able to work from home and don't mind where you live, there's lots of bargains to be had in different parts of the country. Even within a region, house prices can vary enormously by town or even street. However, if you want to buy because it would be cheaper than renting, with the current stress test rules, you have to prove to the bank you can pay maybe an extra 50% a month than what you're paying in rent. And this is why many will be frustrated. They want to buy, but they can't get a big enough mortgage. And it's one reason why there's an increasing gap between those who have parental wealth to help them buy and those who don't. Now, it's one thing to buy a house to live in it, but what about buy to let? Does housing still provide a good investment? Last year, those who sold their houses made on average over £100,000 profit on the initial uh, purchase price. But looking forward, the prospect of similar capital gains, at least in the short or medium terms, is much harder to see. The ratio of house price to incomes has become stretched, and even with a limited housing supply and a rise in the population, there's less scope for the same price rises we've seen in the past decade. In the short term, the effect of higher rates and uh, recession could see house prices fall, at the very least, stagnation. And I think it's always very important to look at real house prices, 
that is adjusted for inflation. Because what, another reason why nominal prices have not fallen by more is that we've had high inflation, rising nominal wages, and this reduces the real value of houses. I'm now really interested to see that looking back to 2007, real house prices have actually fallen 22% in real terms and have fallen 15% since their COVID peak in 2022. Adjusting for inflation shows that housing is not necessarily the one-way bet that some people like to point out. Also, with higher interest rates, investors now have many more attractive options for investment other than housing. Despite rising rents, rental yields are still relatively poor compared to all the costs of letting out a property, maintenance, taxes, etc. Combined with government regulation, higher taxes, many uh, smaller buy-to-let investors have either sold or at least considering selling up. Now, to some extent, big firms have uh, brought into the market uh, looking at the long term. But as an investor, would I want to take on a buy-to-let interest-only mortgage in the current climate? Well, again, I can't give financial advice, but I have to say it looks very high risk and low reward at the moment. So what do people predict for house prices in the coming year? In 2024, the consensus is really for small falls or almost stagnation in prices. The most pessimistic is the OBR with house price falls of 5%. The most optimistic is Pantheon Macroeconomics, predicting a 5% rise in prices this year. But also it's important to look at a longer time frame. The housing market is slow to turn. In the mid-1990s, house prices didn't fall for two years after interest rates started to go up. And when they did fall, it took six years before prices started to consistently rise again. If we look at house price forecasts, peak to trough, the most pessimistic is Charles Lambden of Best Agent, who has predicted a 35% fall peak to trough over quite a few years. Lloyds predict a near 20% fall in a severe scenario of perhaps high inflation and uh, recession. Also, it's worth bearing in mind that house prices fell 20%, both in the early 90s and credit crunch crisis. There are quite a few similarities with these previous crashes. Interest rates have gone up. On the one hand, not quite as much, but because prices are much higher these days, even a small rise in rates has a bigger effect today. House price to income ratios were actually the highest ever in uh, 2022. But then on the other hand, mortgage payments as a share of income are not quite as bad as they were in previous crashes. Also, to some extent, parental wealth is stretching affordability. It's helping people get on the property ladder. And also the dire state of the ha uh, rented sector is encouraging people to buy if they can. You can see the big increase in longer term mortgages as people uh, desperately try to get on the housing ladder. A key factor is going to be the economy. Will we slip into recession? Or will tax cuts in March provide an unexpected lifeline? But to come back to the question, is it a good time to buy? Well, if I was renting at the moment, and if it was at all possible, I would definitely look to buy. I'd be willing to look around for good value. I'd be willing to offer a big discount on the asking price. But I wouldn't be thinking I will have to wait until 2025, 2026, because I'd rather buy and not worry so much about price falls, because it's hard to see very big drops, uh, at least in the uh, short term. When I got a house in 2005, house prices fell uh, a couple of years later. They didn't really affect me too much. The key thing is can you afford a mortgage, not what happens to uh, prices. Now, I can't give financial advice. Everyone's situation is different. But hopefully this does give an insight into some of the factors affecting the housing market. And as you can see, it's not straightforward. There's quite a few unknowns. It's hard to predict long-term changes in interest rates and things like that. By the way, I looked into the prospect of whether interest rates could ever go back to what we saw in the 2010s. I hope they don't for the sake of the economy and long-term fairness. But the video shows that there's many factors affecting interest rates. And also, it's been very difficult to predict long-term trends in interest rates in the past. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe. There'll be lots more great content like this coming up.